Hello, today I have an Apple 35 watt dual USB-C port power adapter, or do I? Maybe it's this one. I'm not sure which one it is. Stay tuned to find out. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, there's links in the description, Patreon is now live, and there's a super button. Thanks to the current patrons for being early adopters. Okay, so I have the official Apple adapter here, as well as a very early, very similar copy of the adapter. These two aren't identical, and aren't claiming to be at least. First, let's take a look at the Apple adapter. The official Apple adapter has the standard Apple packaging, little plastic, and a very easy opening process. The user manual, warranty, and power adapter are all you'll find in the box. The manual is simple and to the point. It talks about the output and input power ratings. The other power adapter is a little less refined as it comes in a plastic tray. The user manual has more detail than the Apple, but I actually like the Apple approach here. Here's the power adapter. We can see the two USB-C ports located on the side of the device. It is a fairly small device and quite similar with the dual port setup versus other adapters. I looked at a monoprice dual port 40 watt device, but this only offered nine volts on each port, so couldn't charge some tablets or any laptops. When we take a look at the Apple adapter, we see something important, and that is the UL safety listing. This means the adapter doesn't necessarily operate at the highest level of performance, but it does mean that it is safe within a reasonable margin. The adapter also has the Department of Energy 6 mark, which means it uses very little power in the idle state and has a high efficiency. The other power adapter is lacking the safety listing, unfortunately, which makes it an instant fail in my book. We may have to do a teardown to do some comparisons. Let me know if you want to see this in the comments. The KubeCot obviously has a little bit of difference in appearance. The side differences are a bit different and the USB ports don't have the white insert of the Apple adapter. The Apple packaging and accessories weigh 26 grams. The Apple power adapter weighs 106 grams. Compared with the Anker Nano 2, the Apple adapter is a little heavier, but also has more output power. The KubeCot is substantially lighter than the Apple at 78 grams. The two USB-C ports are rated for these operations on the Apple device. I like this device because of how it handles the power distribution. You get the 20 volts out of one port for charging a laptop while charging another device at the same time. This is a nice feature. The other device is rated essentially the same and behaves the same. I'll have to check if the ports require renegotiation later on. Once plugged in, the power adapter uses about 0.08 watts of idle power and only 0.26 VA of idle apparent power. These numbers mean it meets the DOE 6 efficiency requirements with room to spare. The THD is extremely high, but this is a non-issue because the power level is very low, but this will hurt the idle power quality score. The KuCot power adapter met these requirements with an idle power consumption of 0.06 watts while also having a much lower THD, so this one is the win for this category. With the USB cable plugged in now, we can see on one USB-C port we get 5, 9, 15, and 20 volt power delivery 3.0 modes, and these are the fixed output voltages. The KuCot also has an 11 volt programmable power supply mode, which is a variable output voltage mode. The Apple device appears to operate as intended when switching between the various ports, which means on each port plugging or unplugging, it resets. It does recover quickly and allow for renegotiation of a higher voltage level. The KuCot seems to behave a little differently, and sometimes it resets, and sometimes it doesn't. I also checked out a Spigen 35 watt adapter. This got super angry whenever you tried to plug in two devices. This won't even get its own video. No US Canada safety listing either. And it wouldn't even do 35 watts. At 9 watts and 5 volts out, the power is nice and stable. As expected, no power factor correction for this device. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. At 9 watts, the power factor of 0.47 isn't setting any records for the Apple adapter. The KuCot got a 0.54 in the same situation. This device won't use the AC power as effectively as it can, but at least the power level is on the lower side. Okay, so taking this up to the full load, 35 watt condition with 20 volts on the output side, it appears to operate as expected on the DC side. The 20 volt output is held up to 19.9 volts DC at the full 35 watt load. This is within the voltage tolerance of the USB power delivery specification, which is 20 plus or minus 0.5 volts. The KuCot was a little lower, but stayed within the tolerance as well. 
Once the Apple adapter is taken up to the 35 watt load, the power quality numbers do improve a little, but certainly could be a lot better. When we take a look at the graph of the power, voltage, and current, we can see that it isn't pretty. The waves are all in phase, or on top of each other, but they are certainly not the same shape. When we look at the KuCot adapter, it's a similar story. Here's an example of the Apple adapter and a power factor corrected adapter next to each other. One of these things is not like the other. The casing of these adapters never really got too hot to the touch during full load testing. Now it's time to take this power adapter up to overload. That is, how much output power beyond its range before it safely shuts down. Let's see how far I can push it. 36 watts, 38 watts, 39 watts, 40 watts, and 44 watts, and the device tripped off. This is a safe overload threshold. The power adapter does recover to 5 volts once the lobe is turned off. So this does mean that the cable can be left in place. The KuCot, just for comparison, tripped out at 39 watts. So the Apple power adapter isn't amazing for power performance. It appears like it is essentially two older power adapters shoved in a newer case. The THD is on the high side, the power factor is low, the efficiency is good though, and the idle power consumption is good, so it's just a little noisy. 35 watts is a new category to power adapters, but I do still have a few comparisons. When looking at this in comparison with other power adapters, this adapter is on the lower side. The PQS is 81 out of 200. Not a class leader, but in comparison with a lot of the other Apple adapters, it's in the middle of the pack. I would like to see that the idle score be a little higher than zero, but at least the idle power consumption is very low. The KuCot adapter, as you can see, officially beat the Apple adapter for performance, but it had some other issues like no safety listing. So not amazing. Again, both adapters met the energy efficiency requirements for the Department of Energy level six. Final notes, a cheap power adapter and an expensive power adapter. Is one more reliable and have the proper requisite safety listings? Yes. Is that worth triple the cost? You will have to be the decider of that. These power adapters are a great design idea with the ports on the side. They have a good appearance, but neither made an attempt at improving the performance from a power perspective. I don't expect power factor correction in a power adapter at this power level, so it is okay to lack this feature, especially when in comparison to everyone else at this power level. These were still not as strong as the competition though. For a price point, the Apple adapter comes in on the expensive side for a 35 watt class of adapters at 60 US dollars. The other power adapter is only $20, but again, lacks that safety listing. The AC power and DC power stay within reasonable limits and the device tolerates overloads safely. The Apple build quality is high and the KuCot made a convincingly similar model. I would expect these Apple adapters will last a very long time and with the newer computers using less power, this adapter should have enough for Apple products or any laptop that can charge from USB-C with Power Delivery 3.0. At 35 watts, you can expect about a four hour charge time for a 100 watt hour battery. This is the FAA airline battery size limit in case you were wondering. Next week will be this Aohi roundup from 20 watts to 100 watts. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.